Have you heard about that man who fed 5,000 people? 5,000 people, one man, one man. I'm here to tell you all about him. Hi guys, today I'm talking to you about my first and foremost leveling up that is important to me in my life. When I talk about leveling up in my personal life, the first thing I want is Christ. <clears throat> The first thing I want is Christ and to be honest I'm not I'm not a new follower I, I've always been a Christian and but I think there is levels in in Christianity and I think that when God is really trying to show himself in your life and calling you to have a relationship with him certain things start changing in your life certain things start popping in your life and they can only especially when it's challenges they can only make you run closer to God and I feel like that's the only way that God is really trying to tell us that it's time to come to me it's time that you get to know your father and in that I have been as I mentioned in my previous videos that I felt like 2019 had been such a difficult year and the only place I could run to was Christ and sometimes you know it it, it not that I did not pray, but it just started with, oh God, this problem again, what do I do? And I'll just be sitting down and I might be depressed about it. I might be quiet. I might be whatever, but you get, you get voices in your head and God starts to tell you, read the Bible and you maybe watch a video on YouTube and somebody's talking about God and saying, cultivate your relationship with God. And <clears throat> In the, in the middle of the year, that's when I started. I have had a Bible for all my life. But it was one of those things where I know there's a Bible, that's a Bible there, and you'd leave it there. But this year, things changed. When my Bible was like my friend, was like that one person or that one thing that I would go to and read and eventually things would just start popping messages secrets within the bible would start popping to me and i believe this happens to everybody at certain different times in our lives and this is my time i guess so as i was going through my year i just started reading the bible and i got closer and and i felt like my relationship with christ became louder and louder and louder because it just it does start off as a little voice but the more you invite christ into your life the more you say i want to hear your voice more into my life into my problems into my joys into my happiness into my every bit of everything that i do christ really starts becoming a little bit louder in your in your head in your life in your problems and he gets to speak to you when it comes to certain things. So this month, <clears throat> um, I've been reading the book of um, John. And um, that's where I, I was asking you, do you know about the man who fed 5,000 people? I've been reading John 5 and I'm reading the scripture that says, um, Jesus fed 5,000 people. What? What? Dude, how'd you do that? Like, this is my relationship with God. Like, Dude, how'd you do that? How does that happen? One man. I've never heard of one man that has fed 5,000 people till today. If you know of one, please drop a comment down there and let me know which man you know that has fed 5,000 people one go. Just like that. Because I don't know him. I know my Christ has done it now. So, beginning. It's the beginning of... So, <clears throat> I guess I'll be doing these things with you guys if... I'll just be doing my, my approvals. If I approve it, God approves it, so we approve, right? And I'm just trying to share the word of God. Christ came to the earth to share with us his life, to share with us his body, his blood. He died for us on the cross. He shared his everything with us. So we can only share because he showed us that love and we can also share to show other people love. So this is done, approved, and I'm just sharing with you guys, all right? So the first line says, Jesus feeds 5,000 people. That, that just shows amazing. That, that is just amazing. And then it goes on to read on and says that um, the multitude followed Jesus. And Jesus realized that there was a lot of people in the um, way he sat by the hill. And he knew that people would now need to eat. And 
he asked um, Philip, there's a lot of people, people will be hungry. Do we have anything to give these people? Do we have bread to give these people to eat? And Philip answered Christ and says, it is impossible to feed these people, even if we had worked for months to buy this bread. Really? Um, firstly, Jesus is the host with the most. He's, te he's teaching us to be well prepared, to plan ahead, to plan ahead. See the situation, plan the situation, and it will come out. It will work out. Jesus is setting an example for us to, to say, if there's something that you want in your life, if you want to see in your life, write it down, jot it down, plan ahead. You know, make certain steps so that the plan will come to fruition into your life. Jesus is a well-planned dude. Knowing that people were after him, um, he knew that people would need to eat. He thought ahead and made plans before trouble would, trouble would break out. One, obviously people would start, oh, I'm hungry. People would start fainting and stuff like that. He knew that these are problems that would come if he had not planned. <clears throat> so he made a plan. He went and asked Philip, testing him. Where can we find food to give these people? Philip then answered him with a with a problem. He answered him with a with a with a question. Oh God, oh dear Lord Jesus, it is impossible for us to feed this multitude of people, even if we had worked five months, we can't buy that bread. Why did Jesus it says that in the text it says that Jesus tested Philip? Why is Jesus testing Philip? If we walk with Christ, if we claim to have a relationship with Christ, and we say we are walking with Christ, and he's right in front of us, he expects us to know where to run to. He expects us to ask him, God, what do we do? He expects us to say, Jesus, can you make a plan? He is testing us to see how far are we with our relationship with God? He is testing us to see, have we grown in our immature ways of, I want, what's going to happen? I need to go find a job. He is testing us to, to just uh, to see that our faith is strong in him. And yet he's walking right in front of us and we don't see him. We claim to walk with him. And yet when a problem shoots, we run the opposite direction. We don't run to him. We run the opposite direction looking for help in our parents, our brothers, our husbands, our aunt, our dog. He says, he asked him to test him. He knew what he was going to do already. He knew what he was going to do. He knew that he was going to feed these people. But he wanted to ask his disciple, do you know what we can do? And his disciple did not answer well. I'm not blaming him because his disciple is just a picture of us. We say we walk with Christ, but do we know what he's able to do? Are we limiting Christ because of our own limitations of non-belief and no faith in him? Are we boxing Christ to say, oh Christ, I can only pray to you, but you cannot deal with my issues. Because that's what we do. That is exactly what we are doing. Oh Christ, I will talk to you, but I will sort out my own problems. No. He's here to be your all. He, he has offered himself to say, whenever you have a problem, call on me. I am here for you. I gave my life for your life. I gave my life so that you could live a full life with a relationship with the Father. The Bible says nobody can come to, to the kingdom unless through, the, through Jesus Christ. So if we don't believe that he is able, he is, he is all-seeing, he is... He's Alpha and Omega in our lives. What are we thinking? What, what are we claiming? What are we claiming? So, <clears throat> the scriptures go on. Jesus already knew what he was going to do, but he wanted to ask um, him. Um, but he, Philip answered with a, with a, he answered with a question to a question. That just shows that Jesus wants our relationship to be stronger. Jesus wants us, he's testing us so that we could realize that our own relationship is weak 
and we need to get stronger and stronger every day we need to level up level up level up level up level up because we want to hear christ in our in our in our hearts in our mind in our life how are we going to hear him by reading the word every single day by having a relationship every single day by by talking to him every single minute oh jesus i'm about to go to the shop do you want to, can you please go with me it's, it's it's as silly as that it's as silly as that but it's called a relationship my husband if he's at home on the weekend honey do you want to go to the shops it's a relationship it's a it's a relationship if i'm eating oh honey do you want a cup of tea it is a relationship so how come we can invite all these things and we cannot invite invite christ who gives us breath every single morning we claim to be his let's be his 100 percent. let's be his when we are showering when we're eating when we are crying when we are smiling when we are partying when we are shopping let's just be in constant communication with our god that's what he wants so <clears throat> so um in chapter in verse um eight Simon jumps in and he says, I saw a boy there with food, with five loaves of bread and two fish. I like this part here because it says to me, be aware of your environment. Be aware of what's around you. Be aware of your surrounding because where you are, that's where your blessing is going to come out from. So open up your eyes. Have that relationship. Ask Jesus to lead you to see what is around you. Because your blessing is right there with you. Your blessing is right there with you. It will feed you. It will feed your family. It will feed the people around you. It will feed and it will be overflowing. I like that. Because the Bible pointed out that he saw a boy. He saw his surrounding. He had noticed his surrounding. And this surrounding in this surrounding came about a miracle that fed multitudes that solved a problem there is a blessing where you are right now there is a blessing in what you are doing right now the boy had lunch the boy had fish he had obviously been prepared by his mother by whoever but as a woman i would like to choose that he was it was prepared by his mother. No offense to fathers that do everything. No offense to anybody. Please. But I would like to think, okay. His mother prepared lunch. This woman who knew my son would be going out. I need to make some food for him for the day. She had no clue that that heart of a mother that she had to look after her boy would look after people that did not even know her. She did not knew, know that the Lord would use her heart and her hands and her food and her fish she prepared for her child to use it for a miracle. God can use anything. God can use anybody. In this instant, it was this mother who prepared the food and then Jesus looked at the boy who had the food and he, oh my God. Mothers out there. I pray to be a good mother. I, I pray that us as mothers, as nurturers, we are able to provide one through Jesus Christ to always have a nurturing heart because our hearts will look after people that we don't even know. And we would be blessed through that. We would be blessed through that. And we would be a blessing to other people because of a good heart. So Jesus took the bread and he he um, did a, a miracle for the people and everybody ate. And all the people ate. ate they had a lot. Um, but before we get to people eating, um, Simon, um, what is Simon Peter said, there's a boy here with, with fish, and but it's only five loaves. What good is it um, with these huge crowds? That also says that we have little faith. We have little faith in the, in the smallest things. And Jesus is like, you of little faith. 
we are of little faith we see one dollar that we're like oh but i need 10 uh, why it's not enough so okay i'll let it go no take that one dollar tomorrow you have another one dollar you have a one euro you have a one shilling whatever you have whatever currency you have i'm, I'm just talking you know, examples let's have faith in the small beginnings Let's have faith in the small money. Let's have faith in the small ideas. Let's have faith in the small little prayer that you give to God in the bus where you're going to work. God, I need more. Have faith in that little prayer. Have faith in the little hustle that you're doing. Have faith in the small business. Even if you have one client, that one client will bring their aunt, their dog, their cat, their bird, their doctor. And voila, you have a business. Because you've had one faith and you've, you had faith in that one client and you did your best. Let's have faith. That just shows me let's have faith. Because God can use anything. Anything. God can use the air. God can use you. Even if you feel like, oh, I'm too little for this. I am too uneducated. I am too whatever you might be. As long as you have faith and belief in him. He will make you great. He will make you, he will make you grow. So, <clears throat> so in verse 10, he says, tell everybody to sit down. Ha! Tell everybody to sit down. That's what Jesus said. Tell, tell your problems to sit down in your life. Sit down, sit down, drop your weight, drop what you're carrying, drop everything. Let him be in control of your life. Tell everybody, sit down. He will feed you. Sit down. Stop running away. Where am I going to get my food? Where am I going to get my money? Where am I going to get my rent? Sit down and talk to him. That's that relationship we're talking about. That relationship. Sit down. Christ, I don't have rent money. They're coming to evict me tomorrow. Sit down. God. God. God has his own ways. And sometimes he leaves it at the last minute. And your miracle drops like that. But he's saying, I want to see your faith. I want to see your belief in me. Stop running. Sit down. So they all sat down. They all sat down. Jesus gave thanks to the Lord when he grabbed the bread to break. In this, it says, give thanks to everybody. Give, give, not to everybody. In everything that you do. Give thanks to the Lord because it is not our power. It is not our breath that woke us up this morning. In everything, let's give faith. Let's give um, thanks. So he, everybody sat down. He gave thanks. Same with the bread. Same with the fish. And then he, everybody ate and they all ate to, to, to their happy moment. <laughs> and when they were all full, Jesus, there were still some leftovers and Jesus said to the disciples, gather everything else that is left over and do not put anything to waste. Like we, sustainability, sustainability. It did not start today, guys. No, it did not start today. Sustainability, sustainability did not start. It's not the in thing. It's always been there. Jesus is the greatest example. He says, gather up all the leftovers and do not put anything to waste. Here we are. We are buying clothes. We are buying everything every single day. Even if we have 10 of them in the house, we are still buying some more. Don't waste. Don't waste. Gather up. Go into your wardrobe and look. What do I still have? Oh, this still look good. I haven't worn it. Wear it for the next season. Don't go out buying for the next year. He's teaching us be sustainable. Be sustainable, have respect in what has been pro provided for you and have respect to own it, have respect to maintain it, have respect to sustain it in your life. Don't jump to the next thing. The next thing is not better. What you have right now is the thing that is better for you for your life right now. Until God says move, then you move. Until God says buy, then you buy. Until God says, okay, now move on to the next relationship then you move on to the next relationship not because oh we just said a five hour oh, broke up with him be strong be sustainable 
Try and work out through those problems. Calling God into those problems will make you grow, will make you sustain certain relationships. And some of them, he says, let go. There is chapters in the Bible where he says, get out. You know, he's not crazy. But he is teaching us sustainability. Do not waste. Whatever you have in your life, do not waste. If it's one, if it's one trouser you have, wash it, clean it, clean it, wash it, wear it. Be sustainable. It didn't start today. <laughs> it didn't start today. It's not the in thing. It's always been the in thing in Jesus' name. All right. So, um, yeah. Now we're coming to the end of the of the chapter or yeah of the chapter here um he verse 14 to 15 after they had all eaten and they had seen the miracles that jesus had performed they were amazed and they wanted to they wanted to crown him king their king jesus seeing this he slipped away in the crowds going away to his own area and just having his own time Um, when he sleeps away and he goes away, it says that when Jesus realized that they would like, they would force him to be their king, he slipped away. I am concerned about his feelings because they would force him to be their king after seeing the miracles. Why is it we only believe him when we see his miracles? We have heard Christ over and over and over when he has proven himself over and over and over even with just his word we still did not believe him only when he performed miracles then we say oh okay um oh okay is it what you can do oh okay we'll take you we like you really and now we actually kind of forcing him oh no 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 come back come back we want you we want you that hurt that would hurt my feelings my little bit of feelings it would now He's a king, he's a god, he's everything. Did we hurt our god? Why did he slip away and walked away? I know the situation, if you were in the same situation, you would be like, oh, so now you want me. <laughs> I mean, if, imagine if God, you know. He, he, if it were me, I'd be like, oh, it's just because I, 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 I fed you. Now you want me to be your king. Now you want to believe me. Now you want to listen more to what I'm saying. Then he slipped away. I'm sorry, God. I'm so sorry for the things that we do that that you have proven time and time and told us time and time again and we still don't believe you or we still take the power back or we still take the responsibility back when you've said, put it on my shoulders. I will carry you and your problems and you will be just fine. Father in heaven, show us Open us, grow us, mature us to a better relationship to understand and know that you are Alpha. You are Omega. Excuse me. So, I was grateful to read this and understand certain things about God. And I'm praying for my relationship to be stronger. That is the first level up that I want to achieve in my life. Without that first level up, I am, I'm leveling down. I'm drilling myself down. So I know that if I have a great relationship with Christ, the level up does not stop. And even if in our earthly world we see the clouds, mine will still carry on because that's where eternal life is and that's where I want to go. And I want to level up until I get there, you know, with Christ. Um, so any leveling up for me without Christ is in vain. I want Christ in my life and I hope I would encourage everybody or other people out there to level up with Christ because just leveling up and wearing the best year and making yourself nice and all of that and all of that, it is in vain if we do not have Christ. Okay, for me, it is in vain if I do not have Christ. Um, so that's my first level up. And um, I hope you guys can... If you've read the chapter and you have something else to tell me and something you have learned, I would really appreciate it if you can drop a comment down there and 
you know let me know what god has said to you um i'm waiting for your for your comments and i'm waiting to hear what god has you know revealed um on this um john 5 to you so that we can just share and we can have in uh, uh we can be in commune um community and we can we can be in communication that's the word <laughs> it's slipping out of my mouth that's the word we can be in communication this is diana approved guys if you appreciate what i am saying and if you like what i'm saying i'm happy and i'm blessed that you are um if it's not your cup of tea and if, if you don't approve if you disapprove if it's not your cup of tea whatsoever i am okay with that i'm okay with that and i just hope that you would let me be okay with what i am trying to live my life with um and um i will see you on the next video um I'm super happy I shared this with you. There will be more of these um, sharings as God permits and more leveling up, like the earthly leveling up. You know, when, when I talk about hygiene and relationships and, you know, just, you know, leveling up, girl, with your dreams, with, with your life, with Christ, with your kids, with your husband, with everything. This is a free channel, so welcome if you like it. I approve you. I approve you and I wish you all the best and I leave you with the blessings of the Lord. I love you guys. I will see you later. Bye-bye.